Today, we're gonna to be going over and showing you how to install the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver here on a 2021 Chrysler Pacifica. As you can see here, most of it is actually gonna be hidden up behind the bumper there. So the only thing we're gonna be seeing is the receiver tube. This does a couple things for us. Number one, it's gonna provide us with the best possible ground clearance. And number two, it's just gonna make for a more factory-like finish. Now also here with our trailer hitch, you can see we have this nice rounded collar around the outside of the receiver tube. We also have a black powder coated finish throughout, which is gonna do a great job of helping the hitch hold up to rust and corrosion issues over time, being that it is on the underside of the vehicle. So adding a trailer hitch to your Pacifica, it's gonna be a great idea. It's gonna make your vehicle that much more versatile. Now we can obviously use the trailer hitch for towing, but if we wanna hit the uh, trails or we need to free up some space inside the vehicle for those long car rides, we can definitely attach either a bike rack or cargo carrier as well. So in regards to towing, our trailer hitch here is gonna have a class three rating, which is gonna provide us with a 4,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the amount we can pull outward on the receiver tube and a 400 pound tongue weight rating. That's gonna be the downward force on the receiver tube. Now we can also use this trailer hitch with a weight distribution system and our capacities are actually gonna increase if we do so to 5,000 pounds and 500 pounds respectively. Now keep in mind, the trailer hitch is tested separately of the vehicle, so the vehicle may be rated lower. If that's the case, we'll have to go by the lower of the two ratings. So you'll be happy to know if you plan on using your trailer hitch for a bike rack or cargo carrier, because we have the larger two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, you're gonna have plenty of bike racks and cargo carrier options to choose from. We have plenty to check out here at eTrailer. So if we take a look at the side of the receiver tube, we're gonna have a 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin hole, which will accept a 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin and clip. Keep in mind, these don't come with a trailer hitch. Most bike racks and cargo carriers, however, come with their own. And then welded to the bottom of the receiver tube, we have our safety chain loops. Those are gonna work with the larger clevis style, as well as the smaller S-type hooks. So now we have a couple measurements for you guys here. The distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that'll be used when you're selecting your ball mount so you can get the correct rise and drop to tow your trailer level. So that one we're gonna call 13 inches. And then finally, we have the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper. Now this one is tucked back there a little bit, which helps it retain the hidden design but it could also pose issues with your bike racks and cargo carriers folding up on the vehicle. So you wanna make sure you measure and check that beforehand so we don't have any contact. So this one is gonna be six inches. So in regards to installation, this one really isn't too bad. The most time consuming part I would say is just removing that underbody panel. There's a couple different fasteners on there. So as long as you're patient and give yourself time, you guys should have no issue at all installing this one at home by yourselves. Let's go ahead and walk you through the process now. So to start our installation, we actually need to remove this underbody panel here. Now it's quite a large panel. In order to remove it, we're gonna have several different fasteners. We're gonna start by removing these outside fasteners here. The silver ones are gonna take a 10 millimeter socket. Now we're gonna switch over to an eight millimeter socket. We're gonna have some smaller bolts around the perimeter as well. Now we're gonna switch back to our 10 millimeter socket. You're gonna see we have some nuts up here, one over here, and we also have two tucked behind this panel, so we'll need to remove those as well. Let's start with those. So now if we come inside the driver wheel well here at the rear, we're gonna have a few more of these screws hiding from us. We need to remove those as well. So now that we have those bottom two out, we have one more at the top here of our wheel well as well. So if we haven't already got them, there's gonna be a couple more along the outside edge here near our exhaust. Yep. 
And now finally, we have two more fasteners, one here, one over here. We'll take a large Phillips head screwdriver and we'll just unscrew those, loosen them, and then we should be able to pop the panel down and out. Now these actually don't come out completely. Just wanna pull on it until it releases. Now we can just pull our panel straight down and out and set it aside. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna temporarily lower our exhaust here. Before we do that, we need to make sure we have some sort of support here. So if you're on the ground, you could probably just use a jack stand, but since we're in the air, we're gonna need to use a cam buckle strap. Now we're gonna take a can of lubricant and we're gonna spray down our two rearmost isolators here to help with removal. So we have one back here and then we have one up here. So now we're gonna take a pry bar or an exhaust hanger removal tool. Or we're just gonna pop out those rubber isolators from the metal hangers. With our exhaust lowered, we can go ahead and now remove our heat shield. We have two nuts, one over here, one up in here. We'll remove those both with a 10 millimeter socket. And now we can pull this down and out and set it aside. So now we're ready to insert our hardware into the frame. Now I'll go ahead and show you the holes that we're gonna be using now. So the two on the rear here, we're gonna have this one, this one, and then this one here. So we're actually gonna be using this one here to feed our hardware into these two holes. And then we'll use a reverse fish wire technique to install the hardware in this hole. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of our pull wires here Feed the coil in through the hole that we want the bolt to come through and then fish it all the way forward until it comes out this hole here. Once we get it out there, we're going to be taking one of our smaller spacer blocks, placing that over the coiled end, and then we're going to thread on one of our carriage bolts. We can grab the other end of our pull wire, throw our spacer block up in there, Follow that up with our carriage bolt and pull that through. We're gonna do the same thing with this hole here. So for the larger access hole here, we're gonna take our larger spacer block, place that over the quilt in, then we can thread on our carriage bolt, and then we'll actually just stick the carriage bolt up through the frame first, follow that up with our spacer block, and then pull both of those straight down and into our hole. Once we get that done, we'll just repeat that same process on the other side. So now with an extra set of hands, we can go ahead and set our hitch up into position. Make sure you start with the passenger, passenger side first so we can go over the exhaust. So now we're gonna take a 19 millimeter socket. We're gonna snug down all of our hardware. So now we'll come back with our torque wrench here and torque everything down to spec. So the next thing we're gonna do is trim our heat shield. So we're gonna measure from the bottom most point here up 11 inches and we're gonna make a line straight across. Then we'll simply take a pair of tin snips and we'll just cut that section out. We'll be reusing this section here. This one we'll be discarding. So now with our heat shield trimmed, we can go ahead and just reinstall it back into place like so using one of our previous nuts we removed. So now we're ready to trim the underbody panel here. It's the last step of our installation. So the instructions are gonna tell you to cut out a pretty large area all the way over here to all the way over here and then up some. Now I did a couple of these and it's not really necessary to take out that much. You can if you want to, but basically we just sort of did a mock-up. We went ahead and just set this on the vehicle there. 
we lined up where the center of the receiver tube opening was going to be and we measured over a couple inches here on each side and we measured up a little bit as well so we're just going to be cutting out this little square here that way we'll have clearance for just the receiver tube and the cross tube will be tucked up behind the panel So we got our cutout made here. Just gonna go ahead and do a mock-up now. Looks like we got enough cut out there. We should be able to attach it no problem. So don't forget to raise your exhaust back up into position, but then that'll complete our installation. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver here on a 2021 Chrysler Pacifica.